let's go and start restructuring the entire campaign. You are presented with three structure types. The first one is the recommended one. The other ones, you really have to know what you're doing. And people who know what these are, they will understand it just by looking their names, single match type ad groups and single keyword ad groups, CAGs for some. What I prefer is to go with the regular ad groups. What they do is, and I'm going to click next, is to put keywords in the same families of intent. As if you have to look at the keywords that are put together as if they are so similar or actually they are so identical that that person is actually looking for the exact same thing. So it's probably the best feature that we have in 10 scores because you won't find it anywhere else. And it's very critical that you do things in this way because you're going to end up having really well-structured ad groups. And depending on which market you're advertising on, if it's a very competitive market and everybody's already doing good things, then just restructuring is not going to be enough. You will need to really work on your ad copy. If you're not in a very competitive market and most people are just doing, you know, rubbish, the simple fact of restructuring can give you instant results in some cases. So you just have to remember that. You first start with restructuring, see what happens, wait a couple of days. If nothing happens, then you work on your ads and you spend 90% of your time on your ads. So this is the new structure for this campaign. You can see all of these small boxes are ad groups and the keywords are here in blue. You can see here beside the keywords, you have some letters. They represent the match types. So we have exact phrase and modified. By default, any keyword that was found that didn't have an exact match equivalent, we add it by default automatically. That, that's like a, a requirement in order to optimize quality. And then in the settings, you can choose which match type to use. A lot of people don't use phrase match anymore because modified pretty much does the same thing. So you can apply the changes like this and you will have essentially removed phrase match out of all your ad groups. Okay, so there we go. This is what it looks like now. You see, so the prefix here kind of changed. So I'm going to revert it back to what it was. You see here, on the ad group name, we add the prefix of TS. The reason being is because when you publish your new ad groups, the old one is going to be paused or the old ones are going to be paused. The new ones will come with the prefix. You can change the prefix however you want, but the idea is that you'll be able to identify them very easily. Any change that you make via 10 scores, you'll be able to see it immediately. And this way, if you want to revert back to your old ad groups, they will still be there. You just have to unpause and pause the other ones. If you don't want to use prefixes, you can absolutely remove them completely. So let's talk a little bit about the structure settings. The most important is the minimum affinity. What is it? I wouldn't advise you to touch this number, but for you to understand it, this way, if you ever come across a case where you're not very happy with the restructure, you can use it and test something different. What it is, is it's going to loosen up its strictness that's a word. It's going to be less or more strict about how it evaluates keywords so that if you lower the number, you might have more keywords in an ad group and it means it's just like, okay, you two guys, you are looking for the same thing kind of, but I'm going to put you in the same ad group. Whereas if you are very strict, if you take it up higher, it's really going to be like, okay, I really want to make sure that my intent is as on point as possible. So the higher it is, the more strict it's going to be. And so the less keywords you will have per ad group. And if you go higher, you might end up with having one keyword per ad group, which is pretty much the SCAG structure. You just have one keyword per ad group and that's it. I mean, not always, you may have 10, you may go to 10 and still have like a couple of keywords in an ad group or not. So, so let me apply the changes. All right, so with an affinity of 10, this is what we get. As I said, we have single keyword ad groups. Actually, not quite. We still have some of them that ended up together, but we have much fewer keywords in each ad group, and we have many, many, many more ad groups. They just keep this number as default. Four is good enough. They are just some really rare cases where you can see that maybe one ad group, you know, you're not happy with how the structure is. Those are rare cases, really. And 10 scores was designed in a way that you don't have to do too much of 
thinking, too much evaluation, you just click buttons. That's the idea behind the whole thing is that we want you to get results without putting in too much effort. So the default settings that we have usually work in most cases. Sometimes, and that's again another rare thing, and this is something that we added because customers were asking for it. And mostly our more advanced customers who really know what they're doing and agency owners very often. You can actually switch keywords around if you want. It's not drag and drop. You can drag and drop a keyword into one ad group. And I mean, we used to be drag and dropped. We had to change it a bit because drag and drop is not easy when you have so many ad groups. Imagine you have one keyword that you want to put in another ad group that is very low on the page, then it becomes a little bit cumbersome to do. So the way we did this is you select one keyword and then you decide what you want to do. So the keyword is appears in this box here. You can select another one like this. Let me select this one, for example. So you can select the keywords that you want and then they are going to appear in the box here and then you decide what you want to do. So you can either move them to an ad group that you will select or create an ad, a new ad group. So this is pretty much self-explanatory. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I don't want you to actually be doing that. Okay, so don't be moving keywords around too much. Maybe once out of 50 restructure. Most of the time you should be switching things around. Next, now what the tool does, it is automatically going to get the ads for each of these ad groups. And what it does is it takes the highest performing ad group that was associated with the keyword and puts it in the ad group. And then from that first ad that it's taken, it's going to create a dynamic keyword insertion version of it. And that's going to be the two ads in the two ad groups. Now, we recommend just two ads per ad group, not more. There are a lot of reasons behind it. The main one being that it makes your tests faster and it reduces the likelihood that you might get false positives because the more ads you're testing, the more errors you might get and it might falsify your optimizations pretty much. Google recommends three ads. Three is fine, especially if you have a lot of traffic, but for most people, two will be okay. Now you can edit the ads if you want. The ideal scenario here is that you will go on these ads and you will try to make them as relevant as you can for each of these keywords. However, that can be time consuming to do it here, especially in this interface. What I recommend you do is don't touch anything. Just keep these ads the way that they are. And you're going to save time because doing this like this is, you know, imagine you have to rewrite the ads of 100 ad groups. That's not going to be very efficient. So just click next and you get to the publishing phase. Just confirm and publish. We also have a export CSV feature. If you use Google Ads Editor and you want to do some more things in the campaign before you publish it, so this is a nice to have if you want to, but it's much, much simpler to just confirm it and publish. One question that a lot of agency owners ask me is when I publish via 10 scores, the changes in the Google Ads account in my client account, is it going to show up as my name or is it going to show up as 10 scores? What shows up is the email address that you connected your MCC with to 10 scores. So it's not 10 scores that's gonna show up, it's gonna show up as if it was you who did the work. And so don't worry a bit about any kind of privacy issues. 10 scores is going to stay in the background and you can continue, you can do your work. Obviously, if we have you have some TS prefixes, then you might want to change them, but your email that is going to show up. So in some campaigns, so this is a campaign that is using automated bidding. And so we don't have a step for the bids, but in campaigns that are using manual bidding, you will have an, an extra step for choosing a different bid. And I think I'm going to show that to you in another account. But for now, I'm just going to close this and uh, get out of here. The reason why I'm not publishing the changes, by the way, it's because this is actually a client account that has been kind enough to let me use it as a demo but I don't want to make any changes on his behalf. I hope he's watching this video as well and he knows that there's some work to be done. Now what to expect when you have restructured a campaign or an ad group. What's going to happen is your new ad groups are going to be reset to a quality score 
of in 10 scores you will see it as a 6 out of 10 but in google there's just there's just a dot there's nothing at all once the data start coming in and you get clicks and impressions one of three things is going to happen either one your quality score is going to increase two your quality score is going to stay the same or three it's going to decrease we would like you to have a quality score that increases it doesn't happen all the time in most cases your quality score is going to stay the same in some very rare cases the quality score decreases and it's always because the ads were not matched to the keywords the, the new ads were not closely matched to the new structure so that's something that needs to be done but in all cases the result is going to be due to an increase in CTR or a decrease in CTR. So that's the only really factor that is going to make things improve. I don't know if I've said that enough times, but having good structure is the base. It can lead to immediate results. Sometimes it does not, but it sets you up for the next step. And the next step is working on your ads.